welcome to Trish Rock TV and Energy Shift, changing energy, shifting perceptions. I'm Trish Rock, perception disruptor and intuitive success mentor. Today's guest is someone I admire greatly. He is truly living his passion and purpose in every sense of the word and helps thousands of people to turn their lives around too. John Spender is a 16-time international best-selling author and didn't learn how to read and write at a basic level until he was 10 years old. He has since travelled the world, started many businesses, leading him to create the best-selling book series, A Journey to Riches, Riches uh, which I'm very proud to be in one of those books as well. He is also an award-winning international speaker and movie maker. John was an international NLP trainer and has coached thousands of people from various backgrounds through all sorts of challenges, from the borderline homeless to the very wealthy individuals. He has helped many people to get in touch with their truth and to create a life on their terms. John's search for answers to living a fulfilling life have taken him to work with Native American Indians in the hills of San Diego, San Diego, the forests of Madagascar, swimming with humpback whales in Tonga, exploring the Onkavango Delta of Botswana and the Great Wall of China. He's traveled from Chile to Slovakia, Hungary to the Solomon Islands and mountains of Italy and the streets of Mexico. Everywhere his journey has taken him, John has discovered a hunger among people to find a new way to live with a yearning for freedom of expression. His belief that everyone has a book in them was born. He is now a writing coach, having worked with more than 170 authors from 34 different countries, and his publishing house, Motion Media International, has published 20 non-fiction titles to date. He also co-wrote and produced the movie documentary Adversity, starring Jack Canfield, Reverend Michael Bernard Beckwith, Dr. John Demartini, and many more, and that's coming soon in 2020. Moreover, you can bet that there will be a best-selling book too. <laughs> so currently living in Ubud in beautiful Bali, welcome, John. <laughs> awesome. Thank you, Chris. Thank, thank you for having me on your show. Oh, my absolute pleasure, absolute pleasure, and um, thank you for coming along. You just do such amazing work, and we've been friends for quite a few years, and, uh, you know, I've kind of seen, uh, I've, see, I've just seen these changes in you, not not so much personal changes, but your your career has just kind of gone off into this direction that you probably never thought it would go into and you're so powerful in it like you know it's it's kind of like an innate ability in you to be doing this thing which which i guess you never thought you know at the age of 10 if you couldn't read or write who would have thought you'd be owning a publishing house right it's um it's so interesting how life flows for us <laughs> So, um, yes, yeah. how did you get started uh, with writing and book publishing, John? Oh, that's a, a great question. And um, I, yeah, like you said, I had I'd basically, if, you would have, if we had a conversation 10 years ago and you, and you would have said, are oh, you going to become a, a book publisher and a writer? I may believe the writing part, but book publishing, like no way, not in a million years and certainly not <laughs> uh, making films. No. Uh, no, my background was I went to horticultural college and ride West Ride in Sydney and studied horticulture, landscaping, landscape design. And I had a, a business for many years and I sold that in 2010 and moved into coaching, speaking. And I had an idea kind of then that I really wanted to write a book and it would be like a, like an educational memoir. Mm hmm so I signed up to do Louise Hay's, um, it was a Hay House cruise ship. Wow. It was a writing workshop. 
Wow. Okay. Awesome. So it was around the Caribbean. Yeah, it was the beginning of 2011. Yep. Uh, I remember having a conversation with a friend of mine. I told her, I'm going to write this book on a cruise ship. It'll be written in like two weeks. And she was like, mm, I don't know about that, John. Like, you know, I've got friends that have been writing a book for like two, three years. <laughs> uh, quite challenging. Yeah. And I said, uh, it's sort of, it's already done. Yeah. It's sort of. <laughs> and she's like, okay. And I went on the, uh, the cruise. It was an amazing experience. Wayne Dyer was there. Uh, Louise was there, Cheryl Richardson, Reed Tracy, and it was just an amazing experience. Mm. But every time I went to write, I just got blocked. It was the most bizarre thing that I'd ever experienced. Wow. And when I came back, I was communicating with a friend and she suggested that I get a dictaphone and speak the, the, the book. Ah, okay. So I did that and I basically uh, finished. So I completed, it was the beginning of 2012. I was at a, a speaking contest and I'd won, but it finished quite late. And I walked up uh, my stairs and um, I was like, oh, I've left the dictaphone in the car. And I was like, I should go and get it. But I was like, oh, I can just go and get it in the morning. And it was ready to be transcribed. And so I went down in the morning and someone had broken into my pickup, into my ute, oh, no. smashed the rear corner panel window and had taken everything. Oh, no. um, they sat in the driver's seat and ate McDonald's. <laughs> and I had this cross that I got, metallic cross that I got from Brazil. Yeah. And they put that in the center of the seat. But everything else was gone. That was the only two things that were left. But oh, McDonald's were <laughs> I was devastated. It took me a little while. My coaching practice was coming along. I kind of, you know, most businesses, it goes up and up and down and the yeah. transition had been very smooth, but I was sort of, I, I just made it through like a rocky period. Yeah. And the other side and started, my business started flourishing again. And um, I decided to do more of a how-to book. And so this time I, I was a one finger typer, my background being in horticultural landscaping. You didn't record. You didn't record this second one. No, I typed it up, and my sister got me a like a CD that you put into your computer, and it basically it's, uh, it's like a program that it teaches you to type. I remember those days like of the mm. programs going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, I had a, like a I think it was a laptop and yeah. and just started typing, and it took a while. I got to the last chapter and I went into the kitchen. I was doing something. I think I was making myself a sandwich or something. Yeah. And I didn't know how to save it. So I would just keep it in like the folder, but it wasn't saved to the actual computer and my computer crashed. And so I lost the book. And I was just like, this just isn't meant to happen. <laughs> um, I had a dream of being a trainer. I invested a whole bunch of money and, and um, time in becoming a trainer and, tried out with different companies and I would just fall short. I'd be like the reserve or right. an honorable mention. And that um, it was a little bit frustrating, but an opportunity opened up to uh, run NLP trainings for a startup company that was starting up in Bali. Oh. And uh, I took that opportunity and, you know, the book was just on the back burner. Yeah. And then I decided, uh, so it was like a three month, uh, contract and I decided that I really wanted to go back to my coaching I had an office in Sydney and I hired a mentor and she helped me move it online and so um, and then she said well rather than just be a coaching program why don't you have it with with a book and I was like and I didn't tell her anything about the experience I was just wanting to forget it because it was an absolute nightmare to me that chapter was experiences. <laughs> yeah and yeah, it, just, it was an idea that just wouldn't go away. Yeah. It just kept knocking, it just kept tapping me on the shoulder and I had to, you know, give it some attention. And yeah. it just, the way she articulated, it made sense. And I had this desire to write a book and it kind of been reignited. Yeah. And the interesting so, thing yeah, is that, that you, you had already written two books, like technically. Well, yeah, that's true. Really I had, yeah, well, I had, I had, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. true. <laughs> so I've it's written two books, though. I haven't published any of 
them, um, all the books, of course, anthology books, and we collaborated together yeah. on uh, book seven, I believe, making um, empowering choices. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So, was your so the book you wrote then? Um, sorry, I interrupted you before with that um, with that mentor. Did that one get published? Uh, yes, it did. It it uh, I got published in 2015. So I sat down with the mentor in 20. 13 around july august july and so that's when, when the coaching program was six months and most of the people from the program op, opted out of writing a chapter at first they're all excited but when push came to shove uh, and i didn't really have the processes that i've got now on planning on blueprint and and, that, and setting out a chapter yeah um so yeah i guess yeah i wasn't that confident myself of how it was going to happen but i just kind of just went along with it Okay. But I had to find other people to fill the book and uh, I kind of bit off more than I could chew and it was like 19 of us, all of us okay. collectively writing t together and the theme was the art of overcoming challenges. Which was, <laughs> you were living it. <laughs> I was living it, yeah, it was interesting, it was very um, how did how did a you lot feel? of ups and downs of the first one. It, it, <laughs> but it published in yeah, November 2015. Yeah. And it was number one international bestseller on Amazon and yeah. a lot of downloads and did, did very well. Absolutely. And I think you might have been, you know, amongst the, the first to do those collaboration books, John. Uh, I think uh, the first people that I'm, I think, yeah, no, I was way, there was a lot many more people doing that than, than me it? before. It wasn't. Uh, Jack Hanfield and Mark Victor Hansen. Oh, they um, were doing it, yeah. And then, but then other people kind of came in to like Dale, Dale, um, uh, Beaufort and and Beaumont, yeah. Dale Beaumont, and some other you know businessy people were doing those collaborations then. But you know, yeah. you've been amongst the first there. How did you feel when yeah. your coach said, "Let's write a book, but it's going to be a collaboration"? Did that come, or was that your idea? No, uh, that was her idea. That each of the um, of the clients that came on board for the coaching program would write a chapter. How did you feel um, about that? Because that wouldn't have been something that you had envisioned doing. I know. I never envisaged doing it. I knew people that were already doing that. Yeah. They were already doing anthology books, but I never had, like, I never thought that, and I thought I'd like to write a chapter, but I never thought I'd be the one organising it because, yeah. like, I still had, like, a bit of a hang-up with computers. Yeah. I... You know, it wasn't my the most enjoyable thing for me to sit in front of a computer yeah. uh, at that time. Yeah. And so I just never thought I'd be the, the publisher or the one organising it, collating the book. Wow. And now 16 later, and you're probably working on the 17th as we speak. <laughs> 17th and 18th are coming together. Well, 17th, we we're getting ready to publish in April. Well, so I have to, well, I have to say that, you know, they're all really powerful books because they've all got really powerful stories. And the reason I like them is because, uh, you know, I don't always have the focus to... I, if, I, if I start a book, I, I kind of tend to need to finish it. <laughs> I get a bit of... <laughs> yeah. Right? Whereas, uh, you know, and so then I tend not to pick one up because I've only got a small amount of time, whereas with your books you can just read the story that you flip open to or you can read the whole thing and uh, i believe that you know whatever uh shows up for us on that day or whatever's in front of us is what we need to see or hear uh so by doing that with any of your books someone will get the the perfect message for them that day and uh you know i found the process of being one of the chapter writers so seamless i mean you've just got a beautiful process going that's easy for for everyone including yourself now i guess from you know when you first started Nothing at all yes <laughs> yeah so yeah no that's awesome so um tell us in your opinion <laughs> what are the three mistakes that first time writers make Definitely not having a, a plan, like, a, like an outline of um, what the book's going to be about or yeah. not breaking it down into different components so often of the different authors that I've uh, collaborated with. You know, people just don't go straight into the writing like, and just automatically write. I think you were one of the, the exceptions. I think you sort of automatically wrote 
your chapter to a certain extent. Um, but most of the time that's a mistake. Um, and basically what happens is you don't really have a clear theme or structure or direction on where you're going. Yeah. And, um, yeah, that can be a bit like a bit of a challenge and it, it creates writer's blocks as, as well, because you're sort of not really sure of the direction. Um, so yeah, I'd say that that's definitely not having like a, a clear outline or intention, um, for, for a book or, um, or chapter breaking it down chapter by chapter is, uh, yeah, is the best way to do what I found. Yeah, and that's when you're writing a whole a whole book and and uh, a whole book, break it down. It's not that much difference to just writing a chapter in that you just got more chapters to write. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. and not having so the first one would be and definitely not having a clear outline. The second one is not really a hundred percent clear on um, like the purpose behind um, what you're writing. Yeah, you know what's the lessons you you want to give the reader. Yeah, if you ask, you know, not being clear on that makes a huge difference to the end result. Yeah, being, and, uh, being clear on the message that you want to portray, and you know, that goes for well, whether you're writing right. a blog, or whether you're writing a chapter, yeah. or a whole book. Yeah. Yeah, the points that you want to make, like what's the takeaway it's for the reader? Yeah. Like what do you What do you want then the lessons for them to be? And Absolutely. So getting really clear on that. Yeah. 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 Um, when, yeah, so um, I've written a, a couple of books, uh, and I liked to, and everybody does it differently, don't they? But you still have to have the same kind of you know understanding of what the message is. Uh, yeah, I needed my title first so that I knew what it was about. <laughs> uh -huh, I nice. needed my title, okay, cool. and then I came up with all my chapter titles, yeah. And then the three or four points in each chapter, and then I just filled in all the blanks. Is that the kind of thing that you're that you're talking? Yeah, about? That, yeah, that's what I'd call like an out, outline. Yeah, yeah, an outline. Yeah. You've broken it down chapter by chapter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, and then, I don't... And then it's um, and so if somebody's um, so whether they're writing a book or whether they're contributing to one of your books and just doing a chapter, you still need to have that, that one chapter broken down into yeah. something that makes sense, not just kind of... At least an outline and, and even better would be to have a blueprint, yeah. you know, the, make, the makings of it and getting clear on like what you're sharing, the purpose um, behind yeah. what you're sharing, yeah. um, the lesson takeaway for the reader. How does it relate to the theme of the chapter? Yeah. And then emotional state that you want the reader in. Those five elements um, make a, a really solid chapter. Yeah. And then there's different writing structures you can use as well. Okay. So yeah. And than um, vomiting on the page, um, there's certain writing structures. And I think mm -hmm. um, the, the simpler the better. Uh, making a point, telling a story, making a point, having supporting evidence yeah. is really uh, helpful. And it really is just, you know, books are just a whole bunch of different stories uh under one umbrella of a theme you just you marry it all together yeah so. yeah now this is probably a bit off topic but i know that you're in um you talk a lot as well <laughs> like in toastmasters yeah so yeah we've done like a bit of toastmasters i used to run my own event actually in singapore i was yeah. running like groups there i did that for really almost two years so do you, um, did I was you, supporting my coaching, my coaching yeah. program. So I went over there and did my own events. Uh, yeah, I've spoken at various retreats uh, in the States, uh, which is, yeah, just very yeah. fortunate. And the reason I bring that up is because um, from Toastmasters and from your own events and that you've learned how to structure a talk. So you've learned how to kind of structure things which is the same as structuring it on paper really isn't it for yeah, yeah. yeah. speech writing skills having a clear um opening middle and end yeah it's it's so critical yeah um, yeah because yeah, i definitely is... I, I learn a lot from that um from toastmasters for sure yeah and how to structure the speech the importance of having but many different mm -hmm. you, know, you know it's not just toastmasters many different organizations talk about that and teachers yeah. and 
yeah, is having having that. So absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, so with that, with your first book, which was the first collaboration book, um, how long did it take you to to publish that one? Uh, so from idea. 2000 uh, July 2013 all the way to uh, November 2015 so it's okay. you know, more than two years when yeah. we had that idea but I mean you could probably take six months out of that as well mm. because the coaching program probably even eight you know or seven months because you know doing the launch and things like that as well getting the people on board then actually going through the program yeah. Um, and it wasn't until the end of that, I was like, I realized, oh, okay, I've only got like a handful out of the original uh, eight or so, 10 or so people that came on board. Yeah. Um, and so I started asking other people and okay. it started to come together. So. It just kind of organically grew for you, didn't it? Do you, do you find that? It was totally organic, completely organic, yeah. Trish. It just, yeah. yeah. Do you think yeah. it's easier to publish a book now than it was a few years ago? Oh yeah, it's never been easier to self-publish or yeah. to publish a book. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it was very easy. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't very easy actually. It was very challenging, <laughs> to be honest. Like, I had no idea what I was doing, but I mean, <laughs> you could do a lot of research. I made a lot of mistakes, yeah. especially in the first one, and uh, with the editing and finding good. It's once you get like a good team, then it's easy. It's easier. Yeah. Yeah, but it has never been easier to publish a book. Although it's still, there's a lot of different fundamentals to take into consideration. You yeah. know, formatting, design, editing, yeah. proofreading. There's a lot. There's a lot that can go wrong. Absolutely. And, um, yeah. It's actually it's still doing a book is a big. It's a big project. So kudos for you for publishing two books on your own, and then of course the one we collaborated with. It's, yeah. It takes a lot. Of uh, it's a big project <laughs> and then you've got and that's like five percent of it then the 95 percent of it is marketing like is getting it in front of people to read it i think the statistics yeah. is that um 90 percent of authors sell less than 200 copies of their book yeah uh, it's sad because so. you know how much energy goes into it um the the couple of books that i've written um really were for um, an industry that I'm not in anymore, but they're still on Amazon selling, so I don't promote them or anything. But you know, they were never in bookstores, and I think if you really want them in bookstores and you really want them to get out there to the wider community, not just accidentally be found, right? Yeah. You you really do have to put that marketing behind it, and I think in a way that's probably what's stopping me from writing my next one because I'm like, well, I'm going to put all that energy into it. And then what if I can't get it out there? <laughs> so, it's yeah, really it's, a, it's a big issue for a majority of authors, for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And my, my them just want to be writers. They don't want to be marketers. Um, but if you want to self-publish. And publishing uh, houses anyway, you're not really, because people talk about royalties. Most of the authors don't get any royalties or very little because they get in advance. But then you've got to pay that money back. Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? That's through book sales. So, um, um, and even with yeah, the publisher, you still you have to do your own marketing. Yeah. Well, even with the publisher, you still have to do your own marketing too. So, yeah, that's right. Most people yeah. don't realize that. So they'll only promote it to a certain, you know, they have their own databases and stuff like that. And yeah, they give yeah. you on what they think that they could get back from, from the book. Yeah. But most publishers won't take you on board. Um, unless you've got like a following, you know, a list. Absolutely. You know, and you can guarantee a certain amount of sales. So. Yeah. Um, and so um, when you first decided to be a writer, was that, was that that moment when you put it into the dictaphone? Or was it later on after you did your first? Um, I used to write. Well, as you know, as you mentioned in my bio, like I didn't learn how to read and write at the basic level till I was 10. Yeah. But how I discovered that uh, I was going underneath the radar I was in year three and my teacher at the time, she would just didn't know how to handle the class. Yeah. You know, and um, so we just did some muck up. But we, I used to just, we had like this, I don't know, we kind of did what we want most of the time in the class for year three. Which is, <laughs> but, Nothing's yeah. changed, John. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. That's right. And um, yeah, so I used to just make up these stories and write these stories. Oh. And... It was, I just had like a wild imagination. 
Yeah. The thing was that I didn't know how to spell and, uh, you know, I was dyslexic. So it was just like a dog's breakfast. It was an absolute mess. But I wanted to go, I don't know why, you know, I was only like eight or whatever. Mm. It was so neat and their writing was so neat. I was like, oh boy, like I'm really, like I've got no idea what I'm doing. And she saw my, uh, the story and she was polite and although she couldn't read it properly, but she called my mum up to school and that was really a saving grace. It really sort of changed the trajectory of where I was going. Um, and so my mum was, she'd gone through like a, you know, a difficult divorce and education was kind of like my back burner because she was in survival mode with three kids and, you know, struggling to make ends meet. You know, at the time we had a lot of secondhand clothes and she used a lot of our clothes from Salvation Army. Uh, so it was a challenging time for her. And, um, yeah, she made it a priority that I, I learned how to, to read and, and write. And I got a tutor, Miss Day, reckon, the teacher, recommended a tutor which was a friend of hers and so my mum used to drive half an hour I think it was like a couple of times a week a few times a week at a rimber on the central coast and uh, I learned the basics you know and starting from scratch you know ah air e, and just laid the foundation and that was kind of like my first experience writing and I wrote a short story in year five a couple of years later and I got to read it at assembly, school assembly. Wow. And it was about my pet rabbit, Bam Bam. And everyone loved it. So, and, so um, there's your first um, experience of writing and speaking. Yes, right. yes. And then I did drama in high school. Oh, beautiful. What a gift did my first... you by really focusing on that, really. Yes, oh, amazing. You know, and it's just sometimes, you know, we, it feels like we're missing out in one area of life, but that's the very thing that we need to develop the character to, you know, to, to go on our life mission. Absolutely. Absolutely. So it all started back then. Hey, so, um, and then through school, um, you continued to do drama, I guess, and speak in front of people. Could you do that in drama class? And, uh, well, I was kind of, yeah, I guess I had another, a number of emotional significant events that happened to me yeah. and, uh, in my childhood and, so I was um, smoking marijuana at 12. I was drinking alcohol at 12 and, uh, you know, at the back of the school smoking cigarettes. And so I kind of like mixed with, I guess you could call it the wrong crowd, but it was just, for me, it was fun to do that and to be a little bit naughty. And, yeah. and so I kind of went off the rails a little bit and, um, you know, I'd be drunk in, in school. And, um, yeah, it was, I guess it was a, a cry for help. I can laugh now. It was very funny, but back then it was kind of like a cry for help. So it definitely wasn't all smooth sailing, you know, life's a journey. We both know that now and, Absolutely. um, different yeah. challenges that I went through. So, but yeah, definitely. Mm. And then my auntie had a really great influence in my life and she recommended that I wasn't really going anywhere in school. Most of my friends had left or been kicked out and, um, I was in year 11 and nothing much was really happening and I was in a bit of a funk and socially and stuff as well and we just mm. became a little bit more withdrawn. And she recommended I go do this Pathways course, which was down in Sydney. Okay. And I, yeah, I jumped at the chance, put in an application, got accepted and, you know, within I think another three years I had my own business and went from there. And so I really got heavily involved in the horticulture and just applied myself and you know, I got top of the class and a lot of the sub most of the subjects and, yeah. and just did really well. It just gave me something to focus on, positive. And it's really not surprising that you've called your book series A Journey um, of Riches or Journey to Riches because... A Journey of, you know, yeah. 
Rich, riches isn't always um, related to money. Riches is the riches of the richness of your life, and it's really that you know having there's always an equal opposite to everything. So having those experiences and those adversities, but then trying to find the opposite of it and finding the joy and finding the actual um, blessing in it all and the gratitude and and that's been happening to you since you were five, right? You've been aware of it, so. It's it's just no wonder you've called your series that, and and every uh, every book that comes out has a has a different uh, theme. But overall, it really is about overcoming, about overcoming, and uh, you can only do that when you just change your point of view on things. One hundred percent. When you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. That's Wayne Dyer yeah. sh shared that quantum truth from many years ago. I want still rings true today absolutely absolutely and yeah and it's the same you know to change you, you've got to, to change your life you have to change the story so yeah so what's your big vision for the future john and um you know did you want to also talk a little bit about your film yeah, <laughs> I'm very course. excited yeah, for you <laughs> yes yeah, so i've been working on the film project for three years and so yeah. um that's just so exciting to finally re uh, be releasing that. Yeah. Um, we'll go back over to the States uh, in June this year to finish the filming and then putting it all together, looking to launch the um, next year and the next yeah. year. So that's really exciting with different events and things planned. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, it's just been amazing that, you know, that, that whole, the whole journey of, you know, doing a film and, I had the idea ages ago, but I completely forgot about it, but it just kept coming back to me again. An idea that just wouldn't go away. <laughs> um, they're, they're pesky, those ideas, aren't they? Like, really? You're back again? Oh, okay, oh, I'll do it. I'll do part it. Part of me is just yeah, very resistant <laughs> to my potential and my creativity. Yeah. And, um, yeah, but just, uh, I don't know, when spirit or universe just has this idea for you, it just yeah. keeps cropping up, keeps cropping up cropping up and so i'm yeah. um, definitely doing more films personal development films and movie i like the movie doco genre okay. where they have like you have the interviews of people yeah. and uh, you have the reenactments or the acting scenes so working with live actors to yeah. depict a story that the the various speakers were speaking about That's and so cool. collaborating with like a, you know 19 other like incredible human beings from around the world yeah. is just amazing um, so to get that out there, it's you know just another another door opening and, and really an opportunity to share inspiration and to inspire people to live their their best selves and to um, take a chance. Absolutely, I just can't wait to see it, and and I know that it will only be the first in a series because I, I feel it'll just take off like your books and so you've got another two books coming along that might be 20 by 2020 what do you think <laughs> well yeah it could it be probably more than that like i've also completed um, um a manuscript for i've written two other another two books that i haven't published that are like um my own personal uh books okay independent releases one i don't think i'm ever going to publish it was more now that I look back on it, it's just more of a like letting go, like a personal of, like, diary, in my childhood and stuff like that. And maybe not interest to anyone else, but it was just yeah. very therapeutic for me to write that. Yeah. Um, but I've still got the I've still got that manuscript on hard drive stored <laughs> <Saved>. away. <laughs> you've, you've learned. You know, it's just nice to it would be nice to read back on it someday yeah. as well. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah. Um, and you've got another one as well. I'm, like, I'm, I probably release that uh, this year sometime. I'm definitely going to release that book. Awesome. And so this is what you do full time, isn't it? You do your books and you've done the films. Coaching, helping people. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So I've had two calls with authors from the States and just so exciting. And yeah. Uh, I worry with even more authors now. I think it's like, a, yeah, it's almost close to 200 different yeah. authors from. I think it's 36 different countries. So. Wow, that's amazing. Wow, what an achievement. 
Yeah, yeah. And it's just an honor to share people's stories. Like we learn through a story and it's just such a gift to be able to, well, firstly help people um, share their story yeah. and then, um, and some people, and different authors need in different support and um, to, to give them a platform to share inspiring messages. Like it's such a win-win, it you know, it's win for the readers. They get to uh, mm-hmm. pockets of, of inspiration on different themes and you know, choice, challenge, change, transformation, inspiration, love and gratitude, entrepreneurship, and so high happiness, courage, so many different titles. Yeah. And, and, and then all the proceeds, all the proceeds and all the royalties from the book. So in each book we sell, uh, you know, quite, quite a few copies. I think the last one was at launch was close to a thousand. And so it's not a huge numbers, but uh, it's pretty good. It's better than the average statistic of, from authors. Absolutely. We raised like three, four hundred dollars um, per book for the Bali uh, Street Kids project. Yes, which it's is, a, such a worthy uh, project. It's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah, which is a home for, for disadvantaged kids that, mm. you know, for whatever reasons, a lot of the time the parents don't have the resources to look after them. Yeah. Uh, they're from rural areas in Bali around the north, northeast, northwest, yeah. uh, and other parts of Indonesia as well. And so that's very fulfilling. You know, it's something. And the book series is bigger than, than myself and then giving to the, the orphanage. Absolutely. I just, I think it's, um, I just think it's beautiful, but you know, and and, you know, the other thing that happens when people co-create in a book, um, and this might've happened with some of your authors, um, is that it gives them confidence to get their story out there just with one chapter, because a lot of people hesitate to write a book. It's like, who wants to hear my stuff, but to actually put it into a chapter in a book, um, you know, I, I think I've done um, about six or seven collaboration books and the first one that I did was really kind of huge for me because it's like, well, okay, now I'm not talking about my old business stuff. I'm talking about what I love to talk about now and, and how will people receive it, right? And so it really was really great for confidence and I know that that does that for many people who are in the collaboration books. Uh, but it also, when when you work with people like yourself that, uh, you know, create best-selling books, it also makes you a best-selling author, which is just incredible to be able to feel that, right? <laughs> so, you know, it does, more than, it does more than just get a chapter in a book on a personal yeah. level. It really yeah. lives it's therapeutic as well. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so with your with your publishing house, do you publish other people's books too, John? Yeah, we've published uh, two other uh, titles. Uh, three, yeah, two other titles. Um, yeah, two, three other titles. So, okay. Yeah, we're working on another uh, handful of books as well. Brilliant. Um, so yeah, all th- yep, two, awesome. three. Yeah, so, so yeah, we work with other authors as well, which is really exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so what, what is your vision for the future? What, what are you? Where do you see yourself in? Uh, so yeah, with the film, yeah, basically is yeah, with launching of the film and the events and the coaching program that's with that and the online right. summit, uh, and then yeah, keep publishing a journey of riches books. I'd like to do one hundred and one books. Okay, uh, that's your goal. <laughs> yeah, as a tribute to Jack Canfield, who mm-hmm. had the idea of. You know, it was 101 stories per book, and yeah, um, it's in the chicken, chicken soup for the soul books. I've I've got yeah, that powerful, yeah. powerful books. Yeah, 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 very powerful. And um, yes, there's a vision to do that and to do more um, of my own books as well. Yeah, and so I'm and more, release it, and more them out <laughs> Yeah, and um, yeah, that's pretty. And I would love to uh, to do some acting to act in a film, at least one film. Okay. So that'd be awesome to do that. Yeah. Um, well, you know, you took drama classes. <laughs> right? Well, that's right. And I actually have written the script, so I technically could write myself a part. So, yeah. You need to write yourself into the script, John, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I kind of have, but, you know, I, I guess, you know, sit down with the director and just, um, you know, just, <laughs> just say, you know, we've sort of spoken about it, but, yeah, yeah so definitely that's a, a um, possibility in the future. <laughs> 
And so I think it's people, easy to, yeah, write yourself in your own film, but to yeah. actually get uh, cast in someone else's film <laughs> is probably more what I'm thinking. But yeah, I think my first start would be I'd have to create the opportunity myself. So absolutely, and I'm sure you will. So yeah. for people listening, if they want to come and work with you in some capacity um, through your books, through coaching, um, you know, is that, uh, do you, where's the best place for them to go to connect with you? Or have all, all of your links are here for them to click on, but where, where would be the best way and what would be the best way for them to do that? Yeah, the best uh, is uh, either email jrspender7 at gmail.com or on Facebook, through Facebook. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Facebook's a great connector now, isn't it, with people. It's often quicker than website or anything like that. So, yeah. So if you're listening yeah. to this, connect up with John on, on Facebook. He truly does do a lot of amazing things and <laughs> you'll, you'll, really, you'll really love having him pop up in your news feed. <laughs> Um, but yeah, connect with him. So uh, yeah, any last words you want to say, John? No, I just, I mean, anything's possible. I mean, I filled every book, you know, uh, through Facebook, using Facebook, and oh. so social media has just been a revelation. The same with the film as well, and so okay. it's just been a, a, a godsend. Um, yeah, it's just anything, you know, every master was once a disaster and anything's possible to <laughs> set like clear intentions um, for yourself, right? And, um, you know, taking time to do the things that, you know, I'm very career focused, but also have fun. You know, I just got back from, you know, a week in Japan. I was also, you know, in Tokyo. And so I travel a lot. I probably do like, you know, half a dozen um, trips every year to various countries and, my life's sort of set up that way and so it sort of forces me to travel and explore and um, involved in a lot of community projects, social giving. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it's, you know, you just, if you want a fulfilling life, you, it's up to you to create it. You've got and to so you're really getting clear on what are your values, you know, what's going to bring you happiness, what's going to bring you joy and fulfillment in your life and then go about, you know, um, creating that. And the clearer you are in your vision, you know this, you know, you clear in your intentions. You know, it was mm -hmm. funny when I collab when we filmed Michael Bernard Beckwith, you know, he was in The Secret and he's Agape Center and yeah. Um, yeah, he's in California. And he was saying that, you know, today he finds, and he's worked with, you know, millions of people and millions of people have watched his broadcast from, you know, Agape. He was saying that he finds that there is an intention deficit disorder, that people don't have clear intentions of what they want. Ah, interesting. And, and, then, and then you're office. frustrated because they're not, it's not showing up. So then there's the frustration. Yeah. Yeah, there's not that clear intention. And so and our favourite author, Dr. Wayne Dyer, you know, he wrote the book, The Power of Intention, and he sort of breaks it down. It's a beautiful take yeah. on the, the value of having clear intentions, you know, clear goals. Absolutely. So, and that's where your manifesting power is, in clear intention. Um, and it also helps you become the master when you are going through disaster <laughs> because you Yeah, well, that's right. Bit. Well, you know, you've got, to, you've got to start somewhere. You've got to learn at some point. So <laughs> I kind of just learn by doing. Yeah, I learn by doing as well. Um, but I love that saying, ma a disaster to master. Um, and that's Yeah, every, every master was once a disaster. <laughs> yeah, I like that. Uh, some <laughs> zen Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much for um, coming on the show. It's been an absolute joy, as always, to get together and have a chat with you. I love all of the projects that you have done, are doing, and intend to do. <laughs> and, um, yeah, all of your, uh, for everyone listening, all of John's um, links and uh, contact details are below here. You can... Um, hook up with him on Facebook or give him an email if you'd like to work with him or find out more about the books and the movie. Can't wait to see it. <laughs> awesome. Super excited. Thank you so much, Trish. It's an honour to be on the show. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you, everybody, for tuning in. I will see you next week for our next exciting episode. Bye.